the secret to success behind a multi-million dollar smuggling network hauling product out of Mexico into the United States and then out of the United States into Canada was revealed this week. The mob reporter here with news of an apparent auto body master building seemingly impenetrable concealed hiding spots in transport trucks that were so good they could get through two international borders without detection by dogs, people, or even x-ray machines. Let me tell you about it. Meet the Trap Maker. Well, we don't actually get to meet him face to face, not yet anyway. Instead, we meet him through his handiwork, his artistry. A bit like Banksy, the famous anonymous street artist. No, not really. And technically, this is the Trap Maker's alleged handiwork, because he was only arrested this week as part of the largest ever international drug probe in the history of Toronto, Canada's largest city. I'm not sure people outside of Canada understand the city's size. It's a metropolis of more than 3 million people, the fourth largest in North America, behind only Mexico City, New York City, and Los Angeles. Toronto Police unveiled the fruits of a seven-month-long international drug probe this week. Seized during their raids and search warrants were more than a thousand kilos of drugs, mainly cocaine, crystal meth, oxy, and pot, that was secretly being shuttled from Mexico into California, across the length of the United States, and across a second border into Canada, where it was offloaded in Toronto for distribution. Police estimate the seized dope is worth more than $61 million. Also seized was almost a million dollars in cash, 21 vehicles, including five tractor trailers and a Mercedes G-Wagon, and a Glock handgun. It is uncertain how long this operation was running until things went sour. Police say at least since November 2020. Their success was due in large part, police say, to sophisticated modifications made to a fleet of transport trucks, cars, and delivery vans. Hidden compartments sealed by trap doors controlled by hydraulic cylinders were skillfully built into the vehicles. These hidey holes not only were invisible to the naked eye, but also could not be penetrated by x-ray machines, which are frequently used at borders to spot check vehicles. These modifications are called traps in the automotive world, and his were large enough to hold up to 100 kilos at a time. It seems likely the ring's modesty helped them avoid detection as well. The traps were neither so large as to call attention to malformations or structural differences in the vehicles, nor so small their profit margins eroded. They also shuffled about through different border crossings, alternating between various border points from both Michigan and New York into Ontario. Contraband was hidden inside the traps and that innocent legitimate cargo was loaded aboard the truck to justify the long-distance haulage. That's reflected in the operation's code name, Project Brisa. It was chosen because the first truck they caught hauling drugs was carrying a load of hair dryers. Brisa is Spanish for breeze. Toronto Police Chief James Raymer said the quantities being moved were frankly staggering. Let me be clear, the size and scope of this investigation in terms of drugs seized and potential harm caused has never been seen before in the history of our service. 20 people were arrested, including a young offender, and two others couldn't be found when police moved in. They remain fugitives at the time I'm making this. Both Toronto men, Scott McManus, who has a history of his own, and William Nunn. During the investigation, police say they identified the man responsible for building the traps, whose evocative but unimaginative nickname was the Trap Maker. On June 22, 2021, police identified him as Jason Hall, a 43-year-old man from Surrey, British Columbia. That's on the other side of the country from the traffickers' Toronto base. Last week, police said he turned himself in a week after his property was searched by police in BC. He has no known criminal record. The trap maker was charged with conspiracy to commit an indictable offense and participating in a criminal organization. Trap makers are often auto body mechanics or car audio installers earning cash on the side. Here are some images from earlier this year from Spain 
where police uncovered a large clandestine trap workshop where passenger cars, vans, tractors, transport trucks, and two motorcycles were caught in the middle of being fitted for traps. It should give you an idea of what we're talking about. The best ones seamlessly find or create natural void spaces in vehicles and imaginatively build mechanisms to allow the space to be filled and then locked and hidden. These mechanized compartments grew in popularity throughout the 1980s, allowing valuable items, both legal and illegal, to be stored securely from both thieves and police. Typically, traps are only revealed by activating a series of switches or controls in the right order, such as holding the brake pedal while opening two windows and then turning on the rear window defroster, or whatever combination works for the buyer and the creator. Sometimes investigators are able to short-circuit the passcodes and open them, and sometimes they use snitches or wiretaps or hidden cameras to figure out the combination to release the traps. Sometimes they're extremely elaborate and complicated, and sometimes quite simple. Evidence in this operation suggests investigators never did figure out the secret combinations to open them electronically. They used the brute force technique. Look at the damaged doors, bent metal and panels removed from hinges. Blunt, but effective. Perhaps that's a testament to the trap maker's skill. Or maybe just to the impatience of these investigators. Thanks for watching.